This video was developed to aid SRNAs in lessening anxiety when approaching the preoperative assessment during clinical. So lay back and relax. Why is preoperative anesthesia evaluation important? It helps us anticipate complications, improve intraoperative management, and enhance postoperative outcomes. So first step, with clean hands, introduce yourself and identify the patient. Make sure you have the right one. Second step, Start by obtaining general information such as consent, allergies, and NPO status. Yes, you can. And as you check for consent, confirm the procedure to be done. Then, pre-anesthetic assessment should be done systematically, from head to toe, as shown in this template. As you go through your head to toe evaluation, you must recognize patient-specific risk as well as cardiac risk. Patient-specific risk for complications depend on the medical comorbidities. The ASA physical status classification is a simple but yet effective tool that has been utilized worldwide. Now, cardiac risk must be independently assessed because of severe impacts including MI, ventricular fibrillation, pulmonary edema, and even cardiac arrest. Metabolic equivalence, MET, it's a quick, reliable tool to assess the likelihood of perioperative morbidity and mortality. A MET less than 4 means poor functional status, which indicates a need for cardiac evaluation. Finally, physical assessment should include, at minimum, pulmonary and cardiovascular examination by auscultation and airway assessment. The most common preoperative predictors for difficult tracheal intubation include interincisor gap. The patient's ability to open the mouth directly affects your ability to align the oral, pharyngeal, and laryngeal axis. Normal gap is two to three finger breadth. Thyromental distance helps us estimate the size of the submandibular space to displace the tongue. Laryngoscopy may be difficult if the distance is less than six centimeters or three finger breadth or more than nine centimeters. Mandibular protrusion test or upper lip bite test assesses the function of the TMJ. The patient is asked to sublux the jaw and the position of the lower incisors is compared to the position of the upper incisors. There are three classes. Class 3 indicates increased risk of difficult intubation. Patient cannot move their lower incisors past their upper incisors. The ability to place the patient into a sniffing position is highly dependent on the mobility of the atlanto-occipital joint. A limited mobility of your AO joint affects your ability to align the axes during intubation. And our favorite one, the malampati, which assesses the oropharyngeal space. A malampati score of 3 or 4 is associated with a more difficult intubation. The predictive power increases when we use these assessments in conjunction. Thank you for listening and good luck on your next preoperative assessment.